you can just go to Microsoft Azure portal and uh, find for the SQL database and then try to create a database by click add button so it would actually ask for any of the resource group if you have already so in my case I'm just creating a demo uh, for SQL and then it's gonna ask for the SQL server name so this is where the server name it's gonna create a new server so I don't have any server that's why it's not showing anything in the drop-down list so I need to create one server name so it, it should be unique Enter your unique name and followed by username and a password and the location. So I'm just sticking with the default it's yours and then click OK. So that has been f uh, fulfilled. That means SQL Server is created. Now I need to create the database name. So I'm going to onboard a database server name uh, is as the my web app, uh, maybe SQL and then app01 is the server name and this is the database. So I can say here uh, maybe this uh, DB is for uh, web app. 01 that's my database name and simply I can choose here to use the elastic pool or if you don't want elastic pool then uh, you need to go for the standard one uh, which is purely based on this specific database and the server based configuration so it's going to charge you uh, for that specific database a special charges whereas if you choose the elastic pool what happens is let's say you have uh, database 1, database 2, database 3, like you know, maybe 4 or 5 databases, but you are not uh, maybe one database is uh, spiking up, so it needs more power. So, what you can do is you can pull the required resources uh, from another database server which is not using full CPU power, so you can uh, dynamically transfer that. Uh, and that specific database will work at a higher speed so that's called the e elastic pool so it's a pool of databases uses as a consolidated uh, required resources uh, so when i say resource power it could be cpu memory and disk so these are the three things are considered as the elastic pool so you can create a pool of databases here and give the required resources so again these are again on a in a edtu definitely so if you don't uh, create that it's going to be normal due to you so here you can configure uh, based on the database uh, configuration so if you see here uh, this is going to be generation 5 with the two virtual cores and 32 GB of the RAM if you need more maybe you can click on here configure then you will come to know what are the uh, options you have if you see here uh, the starting from the basic so this is a very basic and uh, this is where it's gonna cost you uh, from the basic anyway it's very less and then the standard uh, which is again you know if you just increase 10 20 50 DTU points then slowly the data database also will you know change because of the uh, DTU's limitations uh, and then you can increase the database if you want again and uh, you can configure based on your requirements so that means the database size is 1 TB and you are expecting ES12 performance with the 3000 uh, DTUs so that's a very high end and if you see here premium also that these are very uh, very much needed for the mission critical databases where you can go for 4 TB database and with uh, other uh, P15 uh, configuration and these are the things you have like basic standard premium when it comes to the uh, core based purchasing model this is nothing but your uh, sure. use for the manager instances uh, of SQL Server which we talked already if you want to migrate your on-premise SQL Server to cloud you would be using definitely the managed instance where you want it to be just to stick based on the weaker models because you know that that database will behave so and so way and it needs that power of the weaker then you just simply go here and this is again for the serverless as well as the provision uh, with the server so you have an option you can choose here whether you want to go for the server less uh, or with the provision method and also hyperscale and the business critical these are the highest level of the DTUs that are offered by Microsoft and you can choose anywhere here up to 4 TB with 80 V code so this is high end I can simply choose the basic maybe for this uh, type or I can choose here elastic pool let's create elastic pool uh, here so I'll just give here the pool name as my 
yeah so e poll one and then um, so within this poll you have the computing of the generation five with the two cores and 32 gb so this is the uh, poll so you host on this server um, as many as databases that doesn't matter for us it only matters it would be charged based on this uh, cores and the memory so if you want to configure you can configure the pool configuration here so if you see here the poll definitely similar settings that we have seen in another uh, uh, another configuration like you know gender purpose or business critical uh, so these two will be available so that you can choose the poll so here you have the maximum um, capabilities where you can choose the required course and other settings so if I'm looking for the premium and standard so I do have here the configuration for the basic and standard and the premium and also for the business uh, core model uh, and also if you see here the we do have here the vCore uh, based provisioning method uh, as I said earlier also you can actually switch any time from one pricing model to another pricing model it doesn't stop our configuration so you can simply change from the vco model to oh, maybe just for the dedicated pool did use like that you can change it based on your configuration requirement so i'm just going for the basic which is a 4.8 gb maximum so that means i'm going to get 50 dtos so click on apply then you can either review and create or just go to the networking and have a look on it if you're really looking for to create a public endpoint based uh, with the firewall enable configuration which is azure firewall you can do that or a private network based on those only specific endpoints only can communicate uh, based on the ip or the vnets configuration you can choose that or just to the uh, no connectivity method that means just within the microsoft azure portal and then you would be configuring other resources based on that and for the additional setup uh, you can uh, do for the existing backup you want to simply you want to choose any of the backup method you can choose that and collation methods and this is very important one uh, advanced data security which is enable advanced data security feature if you enable this it's going to be charged additional charges would apply per month and this is if you have the 30 days free trial also this actually talks about your um, complete uh, classification of your data uh, based on your regulatory like PCI or maybe GDPR based uh, based on regulations and also you can find out some of the vulnerability assessment all that can be find out with this configuration so we will be doing that later point but for now I'm just going for the basic uh, settings I'll just try to review and create so this is going to create uh, a specific database uh, with the uh, within the elastic pool configuration so if you look at here this is a 50 edtus with 4.8 gb so click on create that's going to create for us a database so deployment is successful i can go back to the resources clicking on the sql database this time i can able to see here the sql server database is available so if i just go to the resources uh, you would see if i just go back to demo sql that's a resource and you see here uh, when we created actually um, there was no uh, resources right so if you see here one would be the sql server other one would be the sql elastic pool was pool got created other one would be the actual database so on top of this sql server the database got created and also there is a adjustment uh, for that it has created the sql elastic pool if i just go to the elastic pool configuration i should be able to see in here what kind of a configuration we have within this elastic pool let's say i want to increase decrease the dtus i can do that I can edit the pool specific configuration or per database here I can do the additional database configuration based on a single database also I can also switch to edit use for the uh, premium same again here also for the database configuration also I can do like I can add uh, different databases to the specific pool because we are talking about a uh, DTU pool right so here I can do that and also if I want this database to be a zone redundant I can simply choose this radio button that would automatically becomes as a zone redundant and if we also look at other uh, configuration especially for the server so this is a SQL server oh, on this servers you have the elastic pool information and also the database you'll see here the database is 
a DB Web App 01 and the Elastic Pool. So this is where you have the server and on top of this server you have the database as well as the a configuration for the elastic pool is present and you can configure all these to connect to the SQL server we can copy the server name which is this and open up your SQL studio management and then give the user ID and the password that we have given while we are creating the user while we are creating the SQL database so I'm just gonna open up uh, SQL studio management here this is the one I'll just open that and give the server name as whatever you have copy pasted and give the user ID and the password that you have uh, used while you're creating this database so click on connect if you have not done any exceptions because this database just got created right so what we can do is we can simply go back to the our SQL server and configure a specific setting uh, that's called a firewall exception let's see if you just go to here under overview you have an option for set firewall configuration this is where you can give the exception or since we are trying to connect for the first time it's gonna ask us to sign in so that it's gonna create for us automatically and then that rule will appear here so let's use this method automated method once I enter the user ID and the password, it comes back to the screen where I need to give a firewall name, a firewall rule name here, uh, which will describe more about. And this is my public IP where I can whitelist within the configuration that I have shown you in the Azure portal. So just click on, you can click on OK or you can come back to uh, set server or specific the firewall and then here you can whitelist the same public IP. Let's say I can give here as the SQL server name uh, used for my office network and this is our starting IP and ending IP and simply uh, save this file. If you want more IPs to be added, you can click on add client IP and you can add it. If you set a uh, Dine public network access as yes, that means it's gonna only approve the private endpoint IPs and it's going to ignore all these firewall rules. So be careful that you know what a configuration you are choosing and uh, that is basically if you are connected this SQL server within your VNet then you don't need to you know, worry about it and simply deny everything and that should actually work as expected. And if you want other resources within the Azure you wanted to connect then you make sure that you should be enable this check uh, this S button so that it can allow other Azure services that can access the SQL server. And if you are more concerned about other networks like your VNets, you can associate those VNets so that it can communicate within that VNets. And once you have done the changes, you can click on save. That would actually allow us to configure. Now, if I go back and try to connect, I can simply connect and make sure that this is a SQL Server authentication at this point of time and it doesn't support the uh, Windows authentication by default. You need to enable that. We would be not talking that later point within this training. So click on connect that would actually get connected automatically. Now, since we have a rule is approved, uh, we should be able to log in. And you can check out the database, which is this is the database which we created earlier and you have all the tables and uh, views whatever you have within this within this database so that's how you can connect and then you can run the required commands you can also connect uh, from azure portal just point to the database and click on query editor which is in a previous state and give the user id and the password that would actually takes to the database to the connection state and then you can uh, check your tables like you have the three four tables here and similarly whatever you have here also you can see directly from the studio management so it's easy either you can connect from studio management or directly connect from your query editor and you can run whatever the queries you want to run